Hello, 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 hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. My name is Sayyam and welcome back to the channel. Right today we gonna solve this beautiful problem of count special triplets. I would rate this problem not very difficult. It would say a medium problem. It is actually a medium problem. But huh, it's a little bit of concept. Se. We'll see the detailed intuition, the detailed thought process. And yeah, if you are new to the channel, make sure you to the subscribe to the channel and like the video. And we'll start the video then. You given an integer array nums. Nums say to pyar hai. Nums is the love of lead code. A special triplet is defined as indices i, comma j, comma k. Okay. Zero based indexing. Zero i less than j less than k. Okay. Teen bhai. Teen ota bhai. Nums of i equals to nums of j into two. Nums of k equals to nums of j into two. That means what? We have a nums of j sitting in middle. Let's say key value let's say it is x and we want to find some indices this is i which is previous than less than j and k which is greater than j they should be value should be equal to 2x this is also should be 2x this also should be 2x we have to count the total number of these kind of special triplets since the answer could be very large you should return 10 power minus 1 plus 7 okay after seeing this obviously the first thing you do is Sayam, you have told it multiple times. Can you tell me one more time? Yes, yes. Go to the constraints. Constraints kya kehte hai? Constraint told us, hmm, again, life is sad. This is 10 power 5. Hmm. That means what? You cannot iterate at least. Like standing on a particular index, you cannot say, uh, iterate on all the pair of i, comma, j, comma, k and you can see this. Right. N cube solution is the most brute force solution. That you cannot do. Right. Ki go for all kind of triplets and just check this condition. This is the first solution. What is the n square solution? n square solution is standing on this. Let's say I fix j. Now let's try to count here how many elements which are equal to 2 into nums of j. And similarly go on the left side and count. Right. And this we totally we can do in order of n time. Right. So this also won't work because this is n square. I hope these brute force logic is easy to understand. Let's try to think something interesting by seeing this example. Hmm. See, what is happening is we are at an element and we just want to know what. That, okay. Hmm. Like in these kind of problems, when you have to count number of triplets and these kind of things, right? You always have to think that how to start this. Whether to calculate all the pairs. Or we can do some some pre-computation will help us. Okay. In these kind of problems, what I generally do, go element by element. Go element by element. That is the best idea to solve and think these kind of problems. And then think what you require and then you solve it. Right. This is a step-by-step -step process. So what I am thinking is, see, let's try to fix J. And let's see, we can solve this optimally or not. Let's say to fix J. Okay, this is the J. I will iterate for each J. And now I will calculate whether there exist I and K or not. Okay, whether there exist I and K or if there exist, how many of them exist, right? Because I just need to find a double of that. Okay. So I am at this position J and I have the value nums of J. I just want to calculate the frequency of element of nums of 2 into nums of J before the j till right and i have to find out again the frequency of 2 into nums of j after the j after the j till n k could be this can lie to n this can up to light up to zero right somehow if i can calculate the frequency let's say the frequency is f1 and let's say the frequency is f2 can you apply your simple combinations logic how many triplets you can form uh sayam it is not very difficult it will be f1 into f2 Absolutely, absolutely, right? That is the combination, right? Because you're fixing J, J is being fixed. Now you have to count the triplets. The triplets will come from number of possible combinations from I, how many indices are possible for I. Similarly, how many indices are possible for K. Since they are independent, you can just multiply them, right? Let's say there is two, two, and this is four. And uh, let's say, not two, two. Let's say this is four, four, and this is two, and this is four and four. So how many you can pick? You can pick four pairs, how, four triplets. How? You can pick this, this, this. Then you can 
you already fix this right now you can pick this this and same this two from here again change this and change uh, fix this and fix these two and pick from these two so you can pick four and dice right this is how you got f1 into f2 okay now our only job remaining is what just need to calculate how many this f1s and f2 like how many elements uh, that have the frequency of this kind right means the uh, we have to need to find the frequency of two into nums of j how we can find it efficiently hmm so this is an interesting question one thing that comes to our mind is ah uh, sayam uh, this is also very simple what we can do we can maintain a map we can maintain a map and uh, we can easily calculate this f1 how many occurrences of two into nums of j have been occurred until the j because what we can do we can we are iterating and we can keep this prefix map prefix map right prefix map we can maintain and we can keep going that and we can easily know how many element how many uh, two into nums of j have occurred until now till j but the problem lies how we would know this f2 this is a very difficult chunk because if you think about it the problem is you cannot maintain a suffix kind of thing also because how would you calculate a suffix because uh, uh, frequency after this j you have to maintain or uh, then you can think of to maintain or uh, if you want to make maintain a prefix frequency of suffix you have to maintain index also and you have to maintain every element also a 2d kind of thing element also right and this won't suffice because element could be let's say smaller also but multiplying can lead us to a larger memory space required that won't work how would we calculate this f2 this is a prime question can you think of a logic that how we can create calculate f2 now i will give you a small hint can you calculate f2 from if you know f1 mm, same what what you are talking about you know only f1 how would you calculate this f2 this is the same thing by the way if you are thinking about this is the same thing two into nums of j they are not different you are not calculating about different element we are calculating about same element that makes the problem very simple if this had would be would be in three this would be a difficult problem i don't know how to solve it as of now but yeah this is now they are both same so can we leverage something ah uh, sayam if we know somehow the total frequency of two into nums of j can we do something oh yes 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 i am i got it where you are going yes can we do something yes you can do ah uh, we can do f2 will be what total of whatever i am talking about minus f1 all right this is the idea absolutely and this is how you can calculate f2 See, f1 is very easy to calculate because when you are iterating towards j you can also compute f1 at the same time because you just need to iterate and you just need to add the frequency of the current element and you can just easily know the frequencies if it is present right hmm. could be zero also there is no problem in that there is no problem in that right and just you can calculate f1 and f okay perfect cool which, which we can do and the job is done f1 into f2 we can just sum sum them up right all this but do you find a problem here but is there any edge case that shows the makes the problem very interesting of this what if you have to go and check oh nums of i can becomes equals to equals to zero also and this is a beautiful edge case beautiful edge case in that case what will happen nums of i equals to zero nums of j equals to zero nums of k also equals to zero that means what all are zeros all are zeros and if you consider the formula again f1 is fine f1 is fine the frequency till towards the left total is fine but is f2 correct is f2 correct no why because we considered total what the current element also the left frequency is also and the right frequency is f1 this one frequency and this is f2 we have to subtract this one extra from here why because this is also considered in the total part we have to remove it from the total right that's what we have to decrease one if nums of i or nums of j equals to equals to and this is a beautiful edge case that's what makes the acceptance rate 39% and this is the 
prime logic. Let's try to see quickly with an help of example also, which we can do it quickly. Right. So this is eight four two eight four eight four two eight four. Right. So eight four two eight four. So what you can do to maintain the total frequencies? Let's try to maintain it. So let's try to write the total frequencies. Total frequencies are eight is two, and four is also two, and two is one. Right. Okay, let's try to get started. Now we will maintain a prefix. Now, see, always remember that prefix also you will maintain before that, not current element. Do not include the current element. Calculate the prefix on the previous thing. So what are you gonna do? You are standing it here. Obviously, you can start. Uh, you you, you can see here, uh, and you don't find any element which is multiple of two sixteen there. So we just skip it. But obviously, we'll add in our prefix wala map. So prefix wala. Map will add it, and eight cup frequency becomes one. Cool. We go to here. We go to here. Right now, what we're gonna do? We're gonna check. Oh, let's try to check the uh, double of it. Is eight exist? Yes, there is some two into four exists. So we got f one equals to one. What is f two? F two equals to total is two minus one. Is one. You got one pair from here, right? One into one. So you got answer. Now. Equals to one. Okay, cool. Now you also increase the frequency of four also, which is one. Now you go to two, go to two, right? And you check the frequency of four. You got until now. You got one from here, right? You got one from here. F one again equals to one. F two is again one. Two minus one, which is equals to one. And you get again get answer plus one, which is equals to two. Means total answer becomes two, right? Cool. Now you go here. Will you find the answer? No, because there is no sixteen present. You go here. You found obviously you increase two also one here to make eight equals to two here. You go to four. You found f one, but if you try to think about it, f two will become zero because f one is equals to two. F two is also equals to two minus two, which is zero. That means you won't get an answer, and final answer is two. But in case of zeros, what will happen? Let's say this is four zero 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 four, right? So you won't get answer from four. But when you are here. Right, f one is what f one is still zero. Try to understand. I am not considering the current element. Okay, f two will be if you won't consider three minus zero, which will be three, and you will count three pairs. If you try to think about it, total minus the left part, it should be three. But it is not the case. Right, it is not the case. Uh, like like this, that we are uh, standing at uh, zero. But here three into zero you will get. So from here to one you won't get any answer because f one is itself zero. When you are sending it here, you will get f one equals to one, and f two equals to three minus one, which is two. The two into one you got two more pairs, which is not the correct case, right? Because you have to subtract one extra from here because you also included the current element in the total part. Right, not in f one, but in total you have included. That's why you have to remove this, and that's what makes the problem very simple. And this will be only one pair will counted, and here zero pair. The total answer is from this answer is one. Right? I hope you understood it. Let's try to move quickly to the solution part. Right? It is not very difficult. It's very simple. We just firstly calculated what? We just firstly calculated the all the frequencies, the total for knowing the total part. And this is the prefix logic that okay until now for the i part f1 we are calculating we took the mod always remember that whenever you get these kind of question right do uh, give the answer mod always take the answers long long because this won't create any problem at all because it may happen that you overflow it and then you apply the mod okay so this could happen that this could go out of range and this could create runtime errors so avoid that directly use long long here this will be no confusion okay. And then what you gonna do? You gonna just iterate in nums directly, and you just calculate the frequency total until now, uh, total. And the left part is like okay, using the prefix C. We have not included the current element until now, which zero case, right? Then what you gonna do? Calculate the right total minus left. Ha! Huh. If uh, I equals equals zero, the current element is equals to equals to zero. We just do a right minus minus. I already explained you because it considered the current element also in the total. That's what we have to remove it extra. And that's all. And we just include uh, increase the frequency of the current element in the prefix part. And then finally, what we're gonna do? Answer equals to answer plus left. See, this is also very very important. Sub multiply by one long long because it could happen. The left could be ten power five, right could be ten power five. It could go out of range. They both are integers, so you can have to write long long to just.
it in the long long range and then we are taking a modulus right and finally turn the answer i hope you understood the entire intuition the thought process if you love the solution make sure you to subscribe to the channel like the video we'll see you in the next video then till then keep learning goodbye